Hi Shopify partners, it's Talia here from the partnerships team at Shopify based in the beautiful Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, when I'm not out enjoying my neighbourhood, you'll probably find me here at my crib. So let's go check it out. Like many of you, I'm working from home at the moment, but I've actually been working remotely at Shopify for over three years now. Uh, so as I show you around, I wanted to share a few tips for remote working. First things first, have a hobby at home. Nailed it. Secondly, if you can't be outdoors, bring the outdoors inside. Having lots of plant babies will bring you lots of joy and give you that dose of nature that you need every day. Having a routine is also really important. So I like to start my mornings with a walk around the neighborhood, um, potentially work out from home, maybe some yoga. I'm getting really good at those shavasanas. Uh, and every morning starts for me with, of course, a coffee. Um, so having these routines will really set you in good stead for the day. So get on that grind. Finally, I'm gonna show you where the magic happens. So, follow me. Welcome to my home office. Uh, so this is where I get to live the dream, talking to amazing partners like yourselves. I'm hearing about all the incredible experiences that you're building for merchants. Uh, so yeah, this is my crib. Thank you so much for joining the tour. Ping me on Slack, I'd love to hear from you. And yeah, stay safe, stay kind, and thank you for all that you do for our merchants. Thank you, Talia, for giving us all a peek into your home. Hello, and welcome to the second edition of Shopify's partner Town Hall, or as we say in Sweden, hej välkomna. My name is Susanne Holmsatter, and I'm the market development manager for Shopify in the Nordics, and I'm based out of Stockholm. Shopify has now been fully remote for two and a half months. And while we all miss being together, we've gotten to know one another in a completely different way. I actually think I've been to more colleagues' homes virtually in the past three months than I've been to actual homes in the past couple of years, which serves as a reminder that, oh yeah, we're going through this together, and I think we both have that same IKEA lamp. It's led to a sense of camaraderie, a natural byproduct of shared experience. It's also made us grateful for you, our partners. We've been able to see the power the Shopify partner community has globally and could not be more in awe as you continue to support merchants through these trying times. A recent example is our Shopify app challenge, where we put out an ask to developers to create apps specifically designed to respond to the needs created by COVID. And the response was amazing. Thank you to everyone who participated. We were blown away by all the creative, well thought out app submissions. We also wanna give a big thank you to our first place winners. Appointments and Bookings by Tilo Mitra, Drop Demise by Amanda Connolly, Sean Peters, Tarun Singhal and Tyler Post, and To Go Hero by Kyle Boss, Matt Chan and Grace Kang. We can't wait to work with these app developers to help get their apps on the Shopify App Store. Now let's get to why we're all here today to discuss Shopify Reunite. Over the next hour, we will delve deeper into the updates announced at Reunite and provide you with the insight to better understand how it will affect you and your business. Our CTO, Jean-Michel Lemieux, you might know him better by his nickname, JML, will start off by recapping the announcements from Reunite, as well as share some exciting news around partners' products. Then we'll open up to a panel discussion hosted by co-founder of Default, Keir Whitaker, He'll be joined by Olivia Kosinski of Mankau, Chase Clymer of Electric Eye Agency, and Alison Simpson, Director of Client Services at the Vaughn Group. They will take time to unpack what the announcements truly mean for you and share their analysis and predictions. We also invite you to join the conversation during and after Town Hall. Share your insights, give us a peek into how you are viewing Town Hall and ask questions of your fellow partners on social media. Just be sure to use our hashtag ShopifyPartnerTownHall. You can also find us on the Partner Community Slack group. After Town Hall, panelists will be answering questions directly on the hashtag PartnerTownHall Slack channel. So let's get this started. <laughs> Hey 
everyone. These are unprecedented times. So local delivery, I'm so jazzed to tell you about it. Uh, we're in the middle of rolling it out to all shops global. Tipping is available today for anyone who wants to use it. We just launched it over the last few days. I'm really excited today to announce that we plan to release a new shop channel. Here you can see the shop app itself where uh, shoppers can look at all of the stores that they buy from and individually see the recent information and personalized recommendations from those stores. I want them to show up fast. And one of the cool things uh, that I think we brought into the Shop Fulfillment Network family is uh, collaborative robotics which uh, works within warehouses that um, really helps make warehouses uh, a lot more advanced. Now we call these, these robots Chuck. Here you can see what this, what this robot looks like. These are self-driving autonomous robots. You will also get the Shopify card. So you can make payments in person and online and even take out funds from an ATM. And you can have a virtual one or a physical one with your business name right on it. They can choose to pay in installments at no additional cost to them. We've completely redesigned the index and we've created a fast ad. We've stripped down to some really basic fields and then in the future be able to work on them in different states. I want to play you something that I haven't been able to stop thinking about. It's a call to our support line from a merchant. The merchants of farmer in the US hit really hard by the pandemic. Hi, thank you for calling Shopify's retail support. I have a Shopify account I've been working on to launch an online store for selling local vegetables and flowers. Yeah, absolutely. I could cry right now because it's a work for Shopify. I don't think we have a farm. Entrepreneurs are the kind of people who make the most out of what they got, who can see the opportunity when everyone else sees despair. This is why we're here. This is why all of us are here. So to our merchants, to our partners, and to anyone who's ever bought anything from a Shopify store, we say thank you. The future of commerce is here, and we are that future together. Thanks, Suzanne. And hey, friends. Now, it's hard to believe we're already in our, what, our second partner town hall. And as Suzanne mentioned, my name is Jean Michel, and I'm the CTO here at Shopify. Now, it's great that so many of you have signed up. Um, if you didn't have the chance to watch the first partner town hall, um, be sure you can go check it out on Shopify's partner YouTube page. And before we get kicked off, I also want to give a big high five and a big congratulations to the winners of the Shopify app challenge. Now, over 155 of you built apps um, across 16 countries and five continents. And some of you shared in $100,000 um, that we distributed to the winners. Now. This app challenge was very much uh, similar to what we do internally at Shopify with Hack Days, where we give ourselves a bit of a constrained time period, get some creativity and some creative juices flowing, um, and ship what we can. And whether or not whether you want or just learn something new, I think the whole premise and the whole philosophy around um, having these Hack Days and these challenges is to get something out quickly um, and learn as quickly as you can. So even if you didn't win, hopefully this has gave you some really good ideas of what you can be working on next. So. We have a, a great partner panel um, lined up right after uh, my session. But before that, what I'd love to do is talk a bit about what you saw at Reunite. Now, if you didn't tune in on May 20th, was our first ever live streamed Reunite experience for Mer Shopify merchants. We had over 100,000 people sign up. Now, in context, that's like filling up two American style football stadiums, just watching about um, and people who wanted to hear about entrepreneurship, and wanted to hear about what we're, what we're up to at Shopify to help businesses scale and grow. Um, it's great that we were actually, we didn't see everyone. I think it would have been a lot more nerve wracking. So anyway, thanks for those who've tuned in. And we had tons of announcements. I think our original plan was to go for an hour and I think it, it stretched into about an hour and a half of content. Now, what I want to talk about today is what opportunities are there given all these announcements for partners around these launches? What are there, what, what kind of critical changes are there that are really gonna be impact partners? And I wanna wrap up with some actual very partner specific announcements that I'm really excited to show off. Now, we had an hour and a half of contact and uh, it's a huge challenge for me today to figure out what to actually highlight around Reunite. So I'm only gonna pick three areas um, to kind of deep or dive into because I feel these have the biggest impact on partners or are newer and are gonna take you a bit of time to kind of get your brain around how to unlock and what opportunities are locked into these. 
So let's kick it off with the POS launch. Now, Satish talked about a whole new redesign of POS. Now, it's not just about dark mode, but this POS really puts apps to the forefront. In fact, I'd say this is the first time in Shopify's history that we put apps on the front page of one of our products. And the reason we did that is because as we redesign and reimagine the point of sale system, we realized that from a user experience perspective, it had to be built around workflow. And on, as you'll see on the front page of the POS app is what we call the smart grid, which is where the workflows get kicked off from. And we also realized that apps were hidden behind a hamburger menu or behind three dots on the checkout page. But apps actually brought a lot of workflows into the POS, whether it be around gift cards, reward systems, looking up customers in different systems, and that apps actually had to play a part in being on the front page of the POS. So this is a great opportunity for partners on um, app developers to actually build point of sale applications. We've updated all of, all of our developer documentation. Um, so go please have a look. Um, I think there can be some really great applications now that are at the forefront of retail and, and reimagine how people in stores work. And maybe one little, little side note here that's important to understand as well is, as we've seen uh, around COVID, although retail stores are closed, or most of them are closed, retail stores as a part of someone's business is actually very much alive. Currently, retail stores are where, whether it be restaurants or small stores where orders are being packed, online orders are coming in, and they're using a point of sale system to actually decide what work has to get done. So even in a world where retail is maybe shut down once in a while, um, I think the, the reimagining of what a retail location is going to be is going to be ongoing way past this pandemic. And that's some of the vision around why we're really investing in the retail and why apps are actually going to have a really big role to play in making sure the retail store is actually going to be the center of their omni-channel uh, business and back office. So POS, really excited about it. The second thing we're excited about is Shopify Balance. Now, this one was one of our newest announcements. Um, we haven't given our partner ecosystem a big heads up about what we're doing here. Um, although if you read between the lines, it's it's not all that, that crazy um, that this is something we thought was really important, right? To build a financial product that's, that's fine-tuned for entrepreneurs from day one. Um, now, what, what we're doing with Shopify Balance, if I just gave you a quick recap, is the first thing is an actual Shopify Balance account, which is a one-stop uh, shop within Shopify admin where merchants can get a view of all their cash flow, pay bills, track expenses, and make decisions about the future. There's also that funky Shopify car that you saw that's branded for you for shops um, and lets you pay and get money faster for spending in store, mobile, and online. And lastly, a reward system. So obviously what this is going to bring to Shopify, and I think why partners should be really excited, is it's going to let partners have opportunities around making new experience about how merchants manage their business finances. So partners, you should start thinking about how you can partner with us, you know, whether to be to fund rewards or think about reward systems that we built into the fact that merchants are going to have a way better view into their finances and a better, a, a, a better view in terms of how they can be moving money between partners, paying up partners, paying up suppliers, et cetera, and having a really good view, whether it be connectors into accounting systems, um, or just simple ways of hassle-free um, rewards. So again, I think our financial products are going to provide a, 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 a really good opportunity for partners. It's also very early. Um, I think what we're looking for here is some really good ideas and engagement from partners. We don't have any APIs published just yet. Um, this is really hot off the presses, but um, please give us some feedback about what kind of APIs, what kind of apps you think. Um, and we definitely want to, um, want to be building some APIs around the Shopify Balance account. Um, to give you flexibility and opportunities to kind of extend it. So the last feature I want to talk about is um, probably the most important and one that we've talked about a lot. Uh, I feel sometimes that we're repeating ourselves here, but uh, let's talk about the online store, which is the home of Shopify. Um, I think Agatha talked about uh, what all of the change we're making on the online store um, from tipping to local delivery experiences during checkout. But obviously one of the biggest changes we're making is the actual complete redesign of how themes are built on Shopify. Now we call this sections everywhere, but really what we're trying to do is make it so that themes can be powerful. You can have sections on each page, but also for merchants that they can see themes as being something that get, that, that, that get upgraded all the time and, they're, and a lot easier to actually manage. 
So historically, what's happened with themes is merchants have had to go in and you know add little tags if they want an app integrated. Apps will get installed and go inject themselves in themes um, for little small things that, that merchants had to do. They actually had to go in and edit their theme. And the minute a theme has been edited, it's also an opportunity where that theme can't be upgraded automatically. Now, themes are um, you know, bring a lot of things for merchants, right? From performance to quick buy buttons to you know managing uh, you know what kind of features they can have on their product page. And one of the visions around sections everywhere is that themes can get auto upgraded if they can actually be built in a in a really solid way. And that's what sections are. Themes are now just going to be a bunch of sections where apps can contribute sections, theme designers can contribute sections, and merchants can design their online store experiences by just merging a bunch of sections together and content. And that way, it doesn't require any code changes. And when a theme developer updates their theme, either makes a performance fix, adds a new feature, makes them faster, they can upgrade um, that theme in a theme store. And all the merchants who are running that same theme can actually get upgrades as well. So I think the long-term vision around what we're doing with the online store section and why it's it's taking, a bit, uh, taking us a bit of time to finish and to really perfect is it's really been a, a build up from the ground up. We've reimagined um, what theme should be. Um, and obviously it's uh, it's taking us a bit of time because I think this is gonna be a, a long-term platform for us. Now we've already seen over 200 app extensions built and a hundred themes being built on the beta and we wanna see more. So a reminder, um, Please, please come and, and, and build some themes and give us some feedback. This is going to be shipping, I think, when it's ready. Um, we've, we've received so much feedback about the, the new themes editor um, that we're really trying to absorb and incorporate as much as we can. So please get going on your, on your theme updates. Um, all this information is in our community, community groups um, uh, around the beta as well. So again, really excited about Sections Everywhere. It's going to both not just give a great uh, theme development environment, but themes are going to be more powerful for merchants. And I'm really excited about um, merchants be able to get free and quick theme upgrades at a click of a button. So, um, so those are the three uh, top features I think that, um, as a partner, uh, you know, you should really lean into around what we've done around Reunite. So the POS first ever um, apps being on the front page, Shopify Balance in really early days for partners. Um, give us feedback on what kind of APIs you think. Um, would be needed for kind of financial products and help merchants manage their, their balance. Um, and lastly, um, keep adopting the theme editor and give us as much feedback as possible. This is one of the biggest releases of the uh, Shopify online store we've ever done. So anyway, that's my quick recap about Re Reunite. Um, you know, please, uh, please go watch the video, the hour and a half video, there's a lot more in there. And our team are also have a really strong commitment to make sure we get back to you um, for each one of the releases you saw at Reunite and give you a lot more detail about what they mean. Um, I know I've been inundated <laughs> with questions on Twitter, you know, about things. How's the online store, um, you know, translations actually going to work for SEO? How's the currency going to work? How's tipping going to work? Local deliveries? You have it. So um, don't worry. Uh, we'll be coming out with uh, as much information as we can about what each launch actually means for you. So, um, so the other thing, let me just pivot a bit about uh, what we're actually shipping explicitly just for you as partners. And as I told you, we did pivot our roadmaps, not just on product, but what we're doing for partners. And today I wanna show you some of the new products that we're shipping, and they're gonna be uh, focused specifically on our partner community. So let's get kicked off with the first announcement, which is annual app billing. So this is one of the most requested features, in addition to the billing API, is annual app billing. Now a closed access beta is currently underway, and we have plans to open this up later this summer for all of you. Now what's great is Shopify is gonna handle all the unused plan calculations, so prorating. So if you move from a, a monthly subscription to an annual subscription, Shopify is gonna just take care of that for you. We can also uh, you know, go from yearly um, to monthly plans as well. So both the upgrades and the downgrades are gonna be handled ex explicitly on our partner platform. So I know you've been asking for this for a while, um, I think this is going to be really easy to set up through the billing API and you won't actually have to manually review and auto renew is going to be enabled for these annual app billing plans. So we're really excited about this. I know, um, I know a lot of you have been adopting the billing API since I think it's been out for three or four years or so. Um, we think this is really um, one of the last features we need to really make sure that our partner platform as an app developer, um, you can provide as many flexible business models as possible to your customers. So. 
Really excited about the app billing. As I said, that shipping, there's a beta right now, so sign up and it's gonna be shipping in GA later this summer. So this is coming soon, get ready for it. Okay, the next feature I wanna talk about is one of my favorites, the theme inspector. Now we talked about the online store and keeping them fast. Um, I also gave a demo of the partner uh, performance dashboard and the merchant performance dashboard. But we all know that one of the most important things around the performance of an online store is the actual theme code itself, the liquid code that backs the themes. And I'm really happy to announce available right now is the new theme inspector with updates and support for collaborator accounts. Now the theme inspector has been out for a couple of months now, and we've seen 60% of users of the theme inspector have made on average or the medium amount of 40% reduction in total render time of their stores. So what that means to me is that the theme inspector is really a great tool for narrowing in on actually what's happening on your liquid code. And you can see in the demo here that I'm showing, um, you know, a really good visual way of seeing what actual liquid block blocks are being executed. You can see what the time that each liquid block is taking. And I think our goal here is to make, is give you the easiest tool possible to pinpoint um, any slow parts of your theme so you can actually make them faster. Now, what's really important about the theme inspector as well is I mentioned during Reunite that we've rebuilt our theme engine from scratch. So that's the theme engine that actually takes your theme and turns it into HTML code and online store code. Now that's been, be been rebuilt from the ground up to be extremely fast, but there's also opportunities for you to have slowish theme code as well in liquid code. And that's why the theme inspector and a new online store engine really go hand in hand to make sure that you have the quickest rendered theme on the planet. Now we're really excited about the theme inspector. Um, remember speed is everything here. So collaborator accounts has been released now. It's available in the Chrome app store and developer access accounts are gonna be coming really soon. So go install it, let's stay quick. So this next feature is really exciting for us. Now you've heard from us about how we wanted to make apps as integrated into Shopify as possible. Almost to the point where merchants can't really recognize the difference between whether it be Shopify or whether it be an app whether it be in terms of the user experience of your app or the performance of your app. So we've released Polaris to make sure your user interface and your designs look great and are fresh and can track Shopify. We've made a lot of changes to the app bridge and we've invested in APIs. And lastly, we're building more and more features of Shopify as apps. But one of the things that's been left is actually authentication, which is really important because that's the first time that merchants get to interact with your app, whether it be for the install flow or whether it be just authenticating. Now, previously that re required a full page reload and a redirect, and it also relied on third-party cookies. Now we all know that browsers are getting really severe around cookies being used cross domain. So we've decided to scrap all that and rebuild an authentication flow that did not rely on cookies, that's relying on JWT to, extend, to exchange cookie flows or to exchange auth tokens. And that doesn't require full page load. And tell you what, it's damn fast. So what you're seeing right now beside me is a demo of this app flow. Now it's gone down from you know six to eight seconds to just under one. So this is again another commitment for us to make sure that there's um, that the apps that we build and you build are as fast as the rest of Shopify. So we're currently launching a beta of this. Um, we uh, follow our Shopify Twitter account. We've launched a sign up flow. Um, if you want to sign up and be an early adopter of this. Um, we're scheduling to launch this in mid-July for all apps. Um, so again, this is really exciting, again, just to make sure our apps are fast and also um, a commitment that we have to really evolving our technology at Shopify um, to make sure we're at the forefront of both speed and security around apps are developed around Shopify. So I'm gonna end the partner announcements with uh, one that's maybe the most futuristic but also uh, one that's the most uh, impactful, I think, on the vision of us making sure that apps uh, play a first party role in the merchant experience. And this is what we're calling frameless apps. So typically apps had been built um, using the app bridge and using iframes. And iframes are essentially a whole different web page that gets embedded into Shopify, whether it be a mobile or whether it be in the admin. And, um, it's slower, it, feel, it feels like it's a different part of Shopify. And I think one of the biggest uh, impacts we can make to making sure apps feel native is that they actually load quicker and that can be embedded in different spots without the need of an iframe. So 
the mandate I gave the engineering team was, can we get rid of iframes securely for performance and make sure that apps can actually integrate a lot tighter into Shopify? And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So you can see a demo here of our email app that's running post um, uh, frameless apps and also with the iframe. And you can see a huge difference. And as, as I was mentioning, we're building more and more features of Shopify as apps, which means that we need this power as much as, as much as you do. So let me just, I'm going to just bring up a, on screen here, a little architecture diagram that shows a bit about what we're doing. So what frameless apps are, are literally, we're going to give partners the ability to um, uh, build small JavaScript uh, bundles that are going to be actually loaded and hosted by Shopify. And these are going to be loaded within a web worker within the browser and run securely and run fast as well. And because of that, we can actually run them literally in the same browser session and they can show up with any, any page refresh. The performance of these are a lot quicker. You've got native APIs um, through the AppBridge client side. So you can get access to the objects and, the, and the, the data that's being shown on the page. And if needed, you can also make uh, remote calls if you want to other services. So we're really investing hard in, in our apps. We believe that getting rid of the iframe is going to provide an, an extremely um, uh, performant and futuristic view of, of, of probably unlock things we haven't thought about, about how apps can work on Shopify. Now we're looking at bringing frameless apps to the checkout experience, to the, the admin experience. Um, and this is going to be the framework and the, uh, the UI and integration framework for the future around applications. Now, our goal is to um, open a beta up maybe during the summer with a GA around October. Um, as I can, as you can tell, this is a major, major um, um, infrastructure play that we're doing. Uh, it's taken us a little while to get all of this right. There's a lot of dead, uh, dead workflows that are going to have an impact. Um, but we think this is going to be the future of, of app development at Shopify um, and make sure that we can have apps that show up anywhere in Shopify and are fast and merchants will not know the difference between a native function and an application. So again, really excited about frameless apps. So there you have it. Uh, as you can see, uh, COVID did not make us slow down. If anything, it's made us sped up, uh, speed up. Um, I'm gonna hang out after this, take some questions on Twitter. Um, there's probably a lot of things going through your minds now um, and, and happy to take questions after this as well. But next up, what I, I'd love to bring, bring on is a panel of Shopify agency partners who are gonna be sharing some of their thoughts about Reunite. You heard from me, but let's hear from some experts as well. Um, so the panel host is gonna be Keir Whitaker. Um, and and no, normally we used to do this at our Reunite, actually at our Unite conference, where we'd have a, a post uh, conference run by partners called Debrief. And we wanna bring that now to town halls for you so you can hear some of their thoughts. And um, Keir is gonna be joined by three other partner agency lead leaders as well. So with that, take it away, Keir. Welcome to the partner panel of the second partner town hall. Um, my name is Keir Whitaker and I'm joined by three people who are sort of working in the Shopify ecosystem, uh, primarily in agency land. So let's uh, have a few introductions. I'm joined by Chase. Uh, where are you today, Chase? Hey, how's it going? I'm in Columbus, Ohio, and it has been raining for like a week. Okay, and a little bit about your business, what type of yeah, clients so do you work with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're a full service agency, fully remote. Uh, I'm surrounded by six people way smarter than me, uh, and they help our clients grow through st strategic design and development and marketing. Okay, and the name of your business, for those who don't know? Oh, yeah. Electric Eye is the name of the business. Excellent. And uh, also in the States, we have uh, Allison. Yes. Hi, good to be here. And a little bit about uh, your business? Sure. So I personally am in San Diego. Uh, our business is fully remote. We're a 17 person agency. Uh, we focus on UX design and development and Shopify plus merchants. Okay. And uh, no one's, no one's mentioning the name of their business. Yes. Yeah, so I represent the Van Group. Okay. So Olivia, the name of your business and where are you and what type of clients do you work with? Okay. So I'm Olivia and I'm the co-founder of Muku, a Paris-based Shopify experts agency. Let's start off talking a little bit about, I guess, more partner-centric um, topics and some of the implications of the things that were announced there. Um, as you said, Chase, sections everywhere, kind of, it kind of got slipped in there again. Um, obviously, it's in private beta, and uh, JML spoke 
quite heavily about that at the uh, sadly the only pursuit event that was um, able to take place this year in Amsterdam, which I was lucky enough to attend. Um, it's definitely coming. I think it's um, no no date was given uh, either yesterday or at pursuit. But um, what do you think the implications of that are for for agency land? Do you think it's going to change the way you work? Is it going to open up new opportunities? Um, are you going to have to retool? I think it's such a big shift in the way that um, we develop for Shopify that um, I think beyond the opportunity, there's going to be some implications in agency land. So I'm very interested in your take, Chase. Yeah, uh, well, we just finished our own custom theme, uh, so we're going to have to retool it, obviously. But <laughs> it's, exciting, it's exciting to have to retool it because most of the time uh, when you have a client with a popular product, maybe they have a, a sm smaller SKU count, uh, they want custom product pages and they want those functionalities, but building those out for clients is kind of a pain in our butt as agencies. Uh, but if you could come at it with a more templatized, dynamic approach and give them the power so they can run their business and make the changes that they want quickly, you know, at the end of the day, as an agency owner, you don't want to like be changing titles and pictures for like static pages. That's not what you want to do. You want to do these cool projects that are really going to impact the business. So I'm completely fine with giving up control of those minute changes uh, when you can have all these like, you know, auto administrable sections in these themes moving forward. I think that's going to be so awesome give the power back to the merchant and allow the agencies to focus on how they can really help grow their businesses. That's interesting. So you think there'll be a move away from maybe custom theme design, but maybe you'll have a whole suite of templates that you can pick and choose in sections that you can just sort of group together for different verticals? Perhaps. Yeah. I mean, I still, I still think that custom themes are still going to make sense for merchants of certain sizes when they really need it to match what their business is and the goals that it needs. Um, but within those designs, giving the power back to the merchant to make those changes and quickly clone out stuff for new product releases. Um, you know, that's just, I hope that's, I hope that happens. You know, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen the technology yet. Oh, I'm sure it will. It's coming soon. Don't worry. Um, what about app sections? I think app sections are a bit of a game changer. If uh, anyone um, got any thoughts around that? What about you, Olivia? You excited by the opportunity of that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, just the whole sections on product pages, like how many times have we had clients come up to us and say, well, I want like a product page like Apple's, right? Like a Apple product pages are amazing. What, what we used to do is either like do templates um, like that. And oftentimes we would use the turbo theme by out of the sandbox, which allows, to, allows you to do that very, very easily. But again, that was very time consuming. And otherwise, what we would do as an agency is just obviously use meta fields. And that, again, very time consuming. You have to take into account all of the design process of it. So that's going to be a massive game changer. And being able to have apps is just, again, massive game changer. Super excited about the amount of time that that's going to save for us as partners. And as Chase said, the power that it's going to give back to the merchants. Not yeah. only... Meta fields are a pretty difficult thing to teach to a merchant that's not tech savvy. Yeah, yeah, I, I can, yep, yep, seen it firsthand. Yeah, and we, we tell our merchants if we can make it editable, we want to because like Chase said, we don't want to be editing those little things for our merchants. We want to be able to give them the power to do that themselves. Uh, every single merchant that comes to us, they want to have that OLP, the one long page for their PDP. Uh, it's now the homepage isn't as important and we're advertising on Facebook and Instagram where they're going directly to the PDP and then to checkout. And so having that long page to have all of those features and the story information about your brand kind of has to be on the PDP and making that easier for our developers to edit and build and reuse definitely helps us as an agency. Yeah, I definitely see there's an advantage sort of speed to market in terms of, of the work that you do. Um, obviously, I guess one of the risks is that uh, when, when people do have the power, they, they can abuse it. And so we may find that these pages get incredibly, incredibly long, especially with app sections. And that would obviously affect uh, load times. And performance is one of the things um, that Shopify are pushing quite heavily at the moment. And um, Jamel mentioned yesterday the sort of performance dashboard that will be appearing in stores. And uh, I remember when I first saw this, uh, I was like, oh, that's a really great idea until I was talking to an agency owner who was just sort of head in his hands thinking, oh, this is going to cause us so many problems. You know, you know, time to first bite, meaningful, contentful paint or 
forget the phrase exactly, but how do you guys see that playing into, into the work that you do? Do you think you can use it as a justification for maybe not having everything on the page? Or how do you talk about speed and performance with clients? Why don't we start with you, Alison, because I know that was one of the points you picked up on. Yeah, so I have to say I am excited that there's going to be a very measurable way uh, that we can help explain to merchants uh, to evaluate our work. Almost every merchant that comes to us is concerned with speed. That's the first thing. And sometimes uh, for some merchants that maybe aren't as tech savvy or they don't look at their stats as much, they just kind of know it's slow on this device, slow on another device. It's sort of this abstract thing of, I know my site is slow. I have no idea what to do. I don't really know where it's slow or how. So hopefully, hopefully that there can be uh, something measurable for merchants to be able to understand that a little more with our help of explaining what everything means. And you're right, it does open the doors of maybe becoming obsessive about it. And if you're not as educated on what you're being obsessive on, um, it could be a, a long road for us. I, th I think it's interesting because obviously, you know, if, if if the product that you have, um, you want to push, maybe, you know, you're using more video or, or this bigger photography, that's obviously going to impact on on those times, uh, just do the natural course of assets being downloaded. So I think, yeah, putting it into some sort of context is, is probably the biggest challenge. I mean, I'm interested that you say a lot of clients come um, directly and, and start talking about speed. Is that something that um, you, Chase and Olivia, you also get people, it's like one of the first topics of the conversation? Absolutely. I think it's really, really interesting. And giving that option to merchant is gonna, it's gonna empower them. But as you both said, again, it might lead to some confusion, but I think for us as partners, it's kind of interesting within the whole Shopify ecosystem, because obviously we'll be able to see which themes work faster and then which apps slow down, you know, your website. So I think it's, it's kind of, it might be Shopify's way of also like calling out some developers being just like, yo, what you're doing is really slowing down the website. So I think that's going to be also a major game changer. That's, that's an interesting take. You, you were smiling there, Chase, as well, when I asked that question. Yeah, uh, I think it's every agency's nightmare to launch a new site and then have a client come back with like, look at my Google page speed <laughs> score, which is an arbitrary number pulled out of the dark. Uh, I've got a lot of content out there about this. I've interviewed a lot of people about it. Um, I think that people start chasing arbitrary numbers sometimes when it comes to their page speed and they're not as educated. So this is going to be something that, you know, partners are going to need to educate clients about it and say, these numbers are good for these reasons, uh, but good and bad are ob obviously it's an opinion thing. So everyone's going to have a different opinion, <laughs> but I just hope it doesn't create uh, situations where client not, you know, merchants are uh, upset about numbers that you kind of, you hit the max and you can't control it anymore because of the, imp like, because of the features that you want in your store. So there's always yeah. a give and take. Yeah. Uh, just quickly, do you have a preferred uh, speed tool just out of curiosity? I do. Shout out to Joe and his team over at Speed Booster. Uh, I love that tool. I use it for uh, a lot of, I just say, hey, look at this. This is what's going on with your store. I mean, most, most scaling merchants have a theme that's got so much gabble gunk in there from testing 900 apps. Your site's so slow, you're going to need to get it retooled. Like, I guarantee it. And that's a great way to just show them like, hey, this is a third party resource that We'll show you what's up. This is built for Shopify stores to test Shopify store speed specifically because uh, a lot of the other ones are kind of built for a more general purpose. Yeah. It's interesting what you, you, you touched on there about sort of the remnants of other apps sort of clustering up themes. I think that's something Shopify are addressing as well. Um, Gemma alluded to that in, in Amsterdam as well. So I think there'll be better ways for app developers to, to not leave behind, uh, you know, the, the things that they've had to through, through necessity um, up to this point. Shifting focus a little bit. I, I, I get, think that um, a lot of the features that will um, what were talked about yesterday definitely focused on, I guess, a new vertical for Shopify. And maybe this has been brought on by the times we face ourselves in, this kind of move to the service sector, which I think, um, as you mentioned, Chase, hasn't been a particularly great fit for Shopify, although many of us have, have tried it over the years and succeeded, I'm sure. But I'll, um, I'll admit, I have told people not to use Shopify that had restaurants and service businesses in the past. So, so you're, uh, you're doing a full 180 on that as of yesterday. I am now reconsidering it. I haven't made up my mind yet, but the push into the restaurant, actually, uh, I, I, I'm really excited about that. I actually did help a, a friend of mine's bar get online during the pandemic uh, really quickly. 
Um, and I saw the power of that and it helped their business. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what more they do. Yeah, I think there's, uh, I've got a few features that were sort of in line with that tipping, uh, the new theme, the express theme, which looked, um, you know, very, very accessible in terms of being able to quickly, you know, find, find your pasta or whatever the demo was. Um, curbside pickup and, and local delivery. I don't know if they, they kind of snuck that one in, didn't they? It's like, oh, and there's an app where you can just sort of plan your route. So um, I think it's very interesting that there's this whole sort of move towards this kind of local economy. Um, what maybe when people aren't, what, they're working out of bricks and mortar stores, but um, obviously we can't go in them. Um, so yeah, I think um, there's a lot there. What were the sort of um, biggest takeaways for that? Do you think this is an opportunity for, for agencies and to kind of go after a new market or do you think it's uh, of its moment, if you will, and maybe we'll see a, sort of a, re a reversion to sort of more, uh, I guess, DTC brands again later in the year post pandemic? Yeah, this is this is really interesting. Shopify into restaurants. Uh, literally, it was last weekend where I was looking at this restaurant and they didn't have a website. So I called them and they asked me if I was calling from my cell phone number and literally texted me their menu after I got off the phone. And after that, I was thinking, uh, before reunite with these announcements, I was thinking to myself, like, it would be so great if all these restaurants could, restaurants could just get on Shopify. <laughs> um, and Shopify does offer the tools to do it, but you, you, as Chase said, you don't really think about Shopify as the platform of choice for restaurants. So I'm really happy to see that, uh, mainly for my personal use, so I can see these restaurants and order online. Um, but I'm, I'm so happy that it seems like the restaurants right now, especially at this time, are struggling, especially if they don't have a website right now. It's really nice that Shopify is offering them a way to be able to get online really, really quickly. And they don't have to worry as much about uh, making a, a detailed design. They can just get their menu online, just get a presence to just get through this time. I think it was interesting as well with some of the apps, um, things like Ping and um, uh, where, where are my notes? A couple of the other ones where it's like allows you to to, to integrate into that. So you can, you know, I'm, I'm outside, bring, bring me the, you know, bring me my veg box or whatever. I think sort of that sort of full gamut of, of apps that are going to enable this kind of uh, service industry to operate in a more interesting way. Um, have, do you guys, when you talk to your clients, do, do you talk to them about the suite of apps that Shopify has, like um, a shop and ping and those other things? Uh, what about you, Chase? Uh, yeah, I, I, we're talking to our clients about apps all the time, especially if we're going through a redesign or something like that. It's oftentimes we're auditing what apps they, they do have installed to make sure that they're making the right decisions based upon kind of our experience in the ecosystem, using the right tool for the right job. Uh, so we're talking to them all the time. Always have an eye on the new releases that Shopify is coming out with with their apps because they usually are pretty well integrated and they usually work compared to some of the other ones in the ecosystem. Um, personally, uh, I'm actually not that familiar with Ping. None of our clients actually use it, uh, but I'm excited to dive in and see what's going on there now. Yeah, I think that, that coming to the desktop and sort of having Teams and the ability to DM, I guess it brings a very much, you know, messenger-like interaction with, with, with your customers, maybe a much more instant um, way, of, way of sort of conversing. Um, some other things that caught my eye, uh, subscriptions again, and for those of us who were at Unite last year, that got a, a big mention was mentioned again. Um, and then a couple of others that snuck in uh, under the radar almost with the upsell and cross sell in store and in the checkout also any, any thoughts on those Alison? Yeah, definitely. It, it would, it's such a huge feature and upsells and cross sells and Shopify releasing those. And I'm, I'm interested to hear more details because it was kind of snuck in at the end without any more yeah. information. Our agency particularly has spent so much time on upsells and cross sells, uh, building them with custom meta fields, uh, managing through airfields, uh, using custom Shopify scripts. And then we've developed our own Shopify plus app order bump. And that adds upsells and cross sells to checkout. And what we've seen, we have 100 plus installs of this. And what we've seen is that between five and 15% of all orders are adding cross sells and upsells. So this is huge. This, is, this really makes an impact for merchants to be able to easily add upsells and cross sells to their cart. 
Um, and it can definitely help during this time too, to make up for any lost revenue for some of those businesses that are in industries that are hurting a little bit more. So I'm looking forward to seeing how Shopify is going to release this and, and what the, I need more details of this. It's interesting that you said you have your own app there. Was, uh, how are you uh, and the team reacting to the fact that a feature that you've obviously put a lot of effort and time into may be coming uh, as a core offering to the platform? Yeah, uh, well, it's, it's very interesting with all of these subscriptions, upsells. There's apps for them. And then we also see that Shopify is releasing them natively. So uh, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely a struggle, but we expect it. Um, we know that if we have a, an app that works and is really successful, that we expect that most likely it's going to come out natively. Do you think um, that perhaps it also will encourage people to migrate to, to an app like yours um, in as much as, um, at least to date, I think it's fair to say that Shopify doesn't, you know, it, it steps into the space, not tentatively, but, you know, it's not a, maybe as fully featured as your app. And so it gives people the idea that here is something a bit like Shopify email. A lot of people say, oh, Shopify email will kill off other email platforms. I'm thinking it's probably an opportunity for people to embrace the power of email marketing. And then if and when the need arises, they can shift to, um, you know, a, a bigger provider for want of a better word. So do you think it's maybe an opportunity for people to see the power of these features? And then if they don't need any more, great, they probably would never have gone to your app anyway. But for those that do, it's an opportunity to sort of investigate further. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head right there. Uh, Shopify, when they release apps, it's usually kind of an MVP. It's not as fully featured. Um, I, you know, they, they're a publicly traded company. They need to invest in these things to make their investors happy, to grow the business. They need to add these features that their customers are asking for natively to the app. Like I understand why they have to do that and I have no qualms with it. I think what's going to happen though, is you're going to see, um, less apps that aren't as fully featured exist when there is a native solution to it, like a subscription or an upsell. But I don't think that uh, what Shopify brings to the table is going to be as robust for businesses that are actually doing the things that need to happen with those solutions. So I, I still think that there's a place in the market for apps such as Order Bump and Clavio, where they are doing it a lot better. They're spending all their time solving those problems of those particular smaller activities in e-commerce, whereas Shopify kind of paints with a broad brush and is like, this is the basic features of what this needs to be. Yeah, and maybe, you know, with the old 80-20 uh, rule, it's great for 80% of those people. They may never use it or it's perfectly fine. And then the other 20 will migrate to something sort of, you know, again, in quotes, bigger, not necessarily, uh, let's not call it better, but um, different, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of emphasis on, on, on checkout as well. I think um, obviously that's something that's very, very robust on, and Shopify is very well known for. And I think um, all these integrations into checkout such as subscriptions will, uh, yeah, on the one hand, I guess, you know, our friends at subscription app companies will be uh, wondering where that leaves them, but also I guess will take a lot of work off their plates in terms of replicating checkouts and, and that kind of thing. So it'll be interesting to see when we get a bit more uh, detail on, on subscriptions, how it impacts um, some of the apps out there as well. Um, Olivia, you picked up on international. Uh, tell, me, tell me why you're so excited about what that offers. Um, well, obviously I live in Greece, France, and I'm just gonna, I have a have a theory that I've been picked for this panel because obviously the ball during reunite France, and I was just like, oh, I see you, I see, you. <laughs> and just got really really excited about it. Just um, as part, of this, we've not found workers when it came to this, you know, um, helping our clients move internationally. Uh, we've been using Weegla as an app, which was developed by some of our French peers and is quite great. Um, it uses um, it uses href lang tags, just the way that the new local domains feature is going to uh, do it um, with Shopify. And I think this it's always been our approach to really test out a market before we developed a second website for a client, just kind of see, okay, well, is, you know, that market really viable for you? So we'd install this app try it out see okay well here's your second website and um that's been you know it's it's quite time consuming obviously it's not the same work as developing a whole new website from scratch you're just copying it right but at the end of the day it's still you know work so it's billable so you get money from it but again you know the client is never all that happy about it because obviously they're the ones paying 
Um, and so I think it's, it's going to be super, super interesting because obviously it's going to enable so many people to just easily set up a second domain and try out new markets. Um, and I think that's just amazing because, and I really like this tweet from the Shopify Partners account, um, which was saying that, you know, in the Anglosphere, uh, I think in Northern America, you guys don't realize how lucky you are. Like it's a whole continent and you guys have just like this one currency in Europe, not the same game. So having that possibility is just amazing. And I'm just almost shaking. I'm so excited about this. Um, just a lot of, yeah, it's going to save us a lot of work. But again, and I think this is kind of a recurring um, topic in this whole conversation is the fact that, you know, we're going to give merchants so many more options. But again, our role is going to be um, to educate them all the more. So I think that's really interesting. And I'm really excited about it again. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's interesting what you said about currency. Obviously, the, the, uh, my, my country didn't adopt the euro, but the euro is very prevalent in Europe. Um, but I think it's often around the, the language that you use to describe products and the way that um, you know, there's not necessarily one description fits all. And I think that's something that I, I've seen when people have sort of argued for sort of headless commerce as well. It's like, well, we have very specific ways that we want to present this product to, to the German market, from the Dutch market, from, from you know, the French market. And obviously pricing. Did you um, get much sense, um, Alison, about how the mechanics of this are going to work in terms of the pricing and the kind of FX? It was all talked about, but uh, I'm not sure I fully understood myself. What did you infer? Yeah, so I, I am happy to hear about the the fact that we can manually override the, the currency conversions because we've had clients that are evaluating expansion stores and maybe they're not quite ready for it yet. And like Olivia said, we don't some some merchants may not want to manage two stores because it's it actually is more work to do, uh, and if they do want to offer that localized uh, the localized experience, they will be able to with this release, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, like some of our merchants have said that the the automatic conversions they don't want to sell the products at that price, and there's really no way to override that. And now, now they're able to do that. And I guess being in the U S and with the dollar, maybe I am spoiled that, I mean, yeah, of course I expect the site to be in us dollars. Of course it is. And it will be nice to have everybody feel that way with their own currency. We've had, you know, to create a second store because obviously the VAT settings are global. So I'm wondering if with local domains, um, that's going to be our VAT, you know, settings are going to be global. Will you be able to do them per domain? So, yeah, so that, again, just thinking about the currency and everything, that's another thing that you guys, you know, that's that's pretty different. Yeah, and, and products. Uh, a big part of evaluating if you want to have that expansion store is can you can you offer products in uh, in one specific country and not another? And is this release going to allow us to restrict the products uh, depending on where the user is as well? Um, we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, you'd hope so. You don't really want to be getting stuck in with some fancy liquid checking for country codes, do you? And uh, restricting product collections. Um, talk, talking about marketing, we've um, a lot of emphasis on sort of driving traffic to two stores, I guess, um, online. And uh, obviously, prior to reunite, um, Toby Lucky got on the, got on a chat with uh, Mr. Zuckerberg and announced sort of Facebook and Instagram integration. I'm intrigued. Do you guys um, see that as as a game changer? How much do you push sort of multiple channels when you're dealing with merchants? I know Chase, maybe channels were, again, not something that you particularly necessarily push with, with um, clients. So I'm interested to know what, what, why is that and what do, you, what do you make of these kind of new um, sort of channels that could drive traffic? Uh, historically, they have been buggy, to be honest. Uh, and we've had you know, we want it to work for our clients at the end of the day. So we've had all, we've used alternative methods to get those same types of integrations going and stay going is the key there. Uh, seems like uh, there had been an issue for a while of most of those channels disconnecting and throwing errors up on the, like the back end, the back office of Shopify stores, which just leads to a merchant reaching out to, you know, their agency, like, Hey, what's going on here? So-and-so channels broken. So, with these new announcements, I just hope, hope that they work and they're, and I hope that I can have faith in them and recommend them to our clients. Yeah, absolutely. They also, I think one of the things that, um, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of this is like you turn on all the channels and you kind of forget about them. They, they obviously take a lot of work to, 
to finagle and sort of, you know, come to fruition. Do you, um, I mean, it's another overhead for an agency, right? And, and the fact that these, these integrations are out there, I'm sure clients will be asking for them. How do, how do you sort of temper the enthusiasm, if you will, Alison? You know, so our agency doesn't, uh, doesn't do too much on the marketing side, um, but all of our merchants are are definitely interested and they and they want help. Um, so making uh, making integrations easier for the merchants is definitely something that that will help them because in order to compete, like you're doing it anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm happy to hear this. Uh, like like Chase said, assuming everything works. Do you think? I mean. Is the success of these channels dependent on kind of the following that you have on those platforms? I mean, will or will advertising through those channels obviously able your products to bubble up without necessarily having to build a big following? I think this kind of goes back to Shopify announcing features that are already in the ecosystem. It's kind of one of those things where they build these integrations that are kind of like an MVP. And if you really want to do it well, you might need to take a more professional approach to it and use different tools to accomplish the goals that you want. Uh, at least that's my take on it. Mm. The, the other one uh, was Google Shopping. How, how, how influential is Google Shopping in the success of an online store? Olivia, any experience there? Um, yeah, for us, it's, it's been quite useful. And actually, just coming back to local domains, I think that's going to be really, really interesting because you know, Google Shopping was also one of the main reasons why we usually had to open up a second store for our clients because of, you know, product names and currency. So I'm really interested um, in seeing how that's going to unravel, actually. Yeah. Would you echo that, uh, Chase and Allison? I think uh, Google Shopping, having a free listing element is going to be useful for some brands, but I wouldn't like bet the house on it changing your business there are also people that are paying to be there still so they're always going to outrank you yeah i know you yeah, don't uh, focus too much on the marketing side allison but interested in your yeah. take yeah i'm i'm curious with with it being free for merchants how 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 they can compete with uh like yeah how, how they're going to compete with uh with their with the competitors that are paying and if if they're uh if their products will show over others. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how that's going to be. Mm. In terms of product discovery as well, I guess there's an element in the new app uh, by Shopify called Shop, uh, Shop by Shopify. Um, have you guys played with that? Have you, have you discovered any local merchants through that yet? It's US focused. Hey, it works here in the UK, come on. <laughs> All right. you know, I, I downloaded it and I saw that it uh, shows me local merchants based off my last shipping address, and I had shipped something for Mother's Day, uh, not oh. local. So I actually wasn't able to find local merchants. So I'm sure that there's some things to work out there. Uh, but our merchants are excited to be included in it. Um, yeah. it, it once it gains popularity, it's just another another way that that merchants can sell. So yeah, sure, why not? If it if it if people start using it more, I think it's great. But um, yeah, it's a good yeah, selling point for Shopify yeah. when we're talking to merchants and uh, when they're evaluating Shopify. It's another thing that uh, that we can talk about uh, to merchants when when selling. Uh, yeah, I think Craig Miller is is sort of populating a forest by the sounds of it. But there's plenty of space in Canada, so uh, it might be a bit trickier here. Um, yeah. That is, that is something that the Shopify platform has that no other platform has when you can own your customer relationship. Yeah. Exactly. Um, at the top of the uh, conversation, you all mentioned that you, uh, in some way more than others, uh, some of you more than others, uh, work with Plus. And there was a kind of separate um, announcement video and blog post um, from the Plus team. And uh, yeah, I was uh, surprised they actually announced a roadmap. And uh, in the video there, if you, uh, I'm sure that the show, um, the link will be put um, somewhere, hopefully after this, uh, where you can check that out. But there's some very interesting things uh, in there. As I said, it's quite unusual for Shopify to formally announce the roadmap of what's what's coming. Um, what um, what stuck out for you there, Chase? Oh, I like the copy and paste flow stuff. That was super cool. I'm a big automation nerd. Like, I want people to be replaced by robots so they can be creative. Um, <laughs> so I, I was really excited to see that, and you know, 
it will probably lead to, you know, some sharing of flows that are really helping some businesses scale and a lot of creativity there. So I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah. Alison, anything stick out for you? Yeah. So the script templates were interesting to us. We use a, uh, non-official Shopify script template. So I'm happy to see that there's an official Shopify script template that we can use. Uh, the analytics were interesting. I, I think that can help us when we're, when we're partners to so many different Shopify plus stores, it, it definitely helps to see, uh, the actual analytics of all of them together. And, uh, thirdly, the, um, the the users uh the user uh the user controls can help our can help our merchants too yeah any anything stick out for you olivia oh definitely yes yeah, scripts and just in terms of time efficiency i also really really liked just the idea that shopify has embraced remote working and is just kind of like in terms of staff and you know um seeing who's editing a product page i thought that was also great that that you know that feeling of, you know, that habit of remote work and being embraced, that I thought that was great. I agree. Yeah, okay. And when you have uh, your clients that might be editing the site and then you are editing the site and our agency yep. all remote and then your client is working who knows when and you, it's, it, that will definitely be easier to know. It will get it's rid so of small the, but so potent. Yeah, it'll get rid of the blame <laughs> game of pointing to <laughs> messed something up, which is unfortunate, a, a reality in this agency world. Uh, just quickly, I mean, we're sort of skirting back a little bit, but there was some new, um, I was quite intrigued by the sort of status of products. I think that's, that could be a, a really interesting, um, you know, addition just uh, in, in terms of sort of uploading catalogs and, and, and sort of working with clients to get the store in a sort of readiness state or bringing on new collections and that kind of thing. I'm surprised none of you really delved into the uh, sort of, I mean, you touched on it, Alison, with the analytics, but this whole kind of organization admin. Uh, again, this was something that was sort of um, sort of teased a little bit at Unite 2019. But I think, I mean, I think that looks, uh, if it works like the demo on the videos, to be a massive game changer. The fact that you can kind of um, set up new expansion stores, you can create user roles, you can install apps, you can install products and, and themes and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I think the analytics to see if you've got, you know, 15 stores or what have you, which were performing, which aren't, or which are doing particularly better by region, I, I think is, is huge for those sort of bigger brands. What do you think on that one, Chase? Uh, I think it's going to be really useful for the merchants uh, to manage their business. Uh, the way that we partner with brands is more on the technical side, uh, marketing, growth, those types of strategies, like design and development of the sites. Uh, but running the business and the operations usually always lands like in the merchant's control or someone on their team. So a lot of those features, especially in the plus world, are definitely going to help those merchants run their business more successfully. I know user roles across the board have been a pain point for a lot of clients in different areas where they want people to see certain things and not certain things. Um, so it's going to be really useful to have like you like custom defined roles within businesses. I guess we've got a couple of minutes left. Um... While we, um, uh, before we go, just maybe um, go around and sort of say, uh, you know, a bit of a interesting question, like uh, what did you uh, hope to see that didn't uh, get announced? Why don't we start with you, Chase? I was hoping to see a lot more announced on POS. I think that POS is an amazing product that they're putting out, but I would not say it's world-class. I definitely think it needs improvement and I would love to see it get that improvement because that will help them when some uh, clients that are using other platforms, uh, you know, especially in like the service space and in the restaurant space, POS is not something I see that is going to be useful to them because there are so, there's a lot more uh, specific stuff that needs to happen within POS. So I'm excited to see some announcements on Shopify side in the future of POS updates. And I know that they're opening a lot more stuff up to, um, you know, third-party developers. So I'm excited to see POS become more full functioned. Cool. What about you, Olivia? Um, I was thinking about the wholesale channel. I was kind of hoping to get a bit more about that and just bettering it. Uh, so many of my clients um, really use that as a channel. And um, yeah, I was, I was hoping for some, for some updates, but that didn't happen. And other than that, yeah, Shopify payments in France. That would be amazing. But, you know, I, I say that every year. 
What, um, what's missing in wholesale, in, in case Shopify are listening? Um, in case Shopify, I just think the whole experience is just not good enough. It could be really, really improved. It's not, it's not level entry enough for some of our managers. Um, and so I think just making the whole experience easier for them, perhaps, um, yeah, more user friendly, I guess. Okay. And uh, last but by no means least, Alison? Yeah, I quickly on wholesale, I, I agree with that too. Uh, sometimes we don't even recommend the wholesale channel. It might be easier to do an expansion store for wholesale because there's so many limitations in the design and even in the admin, like right now, you can't view the company name in the admin in the list. It's, it's the, like, things like that are needed when you have a wholesale channel. Um, for, for our agency, we were really excited about order editing last year, and then there, there weren't any announcements about it this year. And, uh, that affects like some of the custom work that we do. And that we were looking forward to hearing more about that. And it, it wasn't mentioned. Okay, cool. Any, any final thoughts before we close out and hand back? No, I, I love Shopify. Please don't <laughs> take my opinion seriously. Excellent. We, we haven't, we haven't for the whole conversation. No, I, of course I just, well, um, thank you so much for joining uh, me on this uh, part of panel and thank you for Shopify for letting me get behind the mic once again. It feels like old times. It's been uh, really interesting and um, yeah, I look forward to uh, uh, chatting with you again in the future and then seeing uh, how these announcements and uh, new features uh, come to fruition. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Kier, Olivia, Chase, and Alison for sharing your insights. It's always powerful for us at Shopify to hear directly from our partners, and this was no exception. Also, shout out to JML for giving us the lowdown of the announcements at Reunite. One of the main reasons we started Partner Town Hall was to have a chance to connect with all of you, but also offer you a chance to connect with each other. As I mentioned at the start, you can continue the conversation online on both the hashtag partner town hall channel on Partner Slack and over social media using the hashtag Shopify partner town hall. If you're not a part of the Slack community and you want to be, check out the link in the event follow up email for more information on how to join. We'll continue to host Partner Town Hall on a monthly cadence, but if you're looking for additional ways to stay up to date, make sure you subscribe to our What's New newsletter and the Shopify change log. Before I sign off, I wanna take this opportunity and thank all of our speakers for their presentations today, as well as my colleagues at Shopify who helped organize this event. Most of all, to all of you for tuning in from around the world. As we say here in Sweden, Tack för att ni var med. Take care and see you next month for our June Partner Town Hall. Bye.